It's nice, and you, with that kind of thing, you just never know. You just never know when that one little uh, extra picture goes. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Which house are you in? Um, from your house, we live down the left. I love it. And when you're on your way out, you can grab a fish. They come down like ridges and rivers and stuff like that. But generally, yeah, if you have more feeders, you'll have more hummingbirds. But you have to do it consistently. It's just, you know, people think, I'm going to put up feeders, I'll have hummingbirds doing this stuff. Yes, ma'am. So the hummingbirds we see in our yard are not the same ones. They're just passing through? No, I get people that have had the same hummingbird for 17 years <laughs> because it always perches right up there. People don't, ruby-throated hummingbirds will nest as many as three times in the summertime. I just, you just get all in the desert because they're not little ladies and gentlemen. Well, they're not. They're hummingbirds. So, you know, they, they, they find that food source and they, they defend it. Old bottles or wine, you know, that sort of thing. They're a, lot, they're a whole lot prettier, but they don't work. They, uh, first thing, they don't have insect guards on them. They get insects in them and they will uh, either continually drip or they'll get a vapor lock and nothing will come out of them. That hummingbird cares if your hummingbird feeder is faded or not. They couldn't care less. Uh, you know, if you want to get new feeders, yeah, but don't blame it on the hummingbird. And you don't have to boil the water. I don't care. Hot water out of the tap, hot enough to dissolve the sugar. I think they only drink uh, nectar or sugar water because they only see them at the feeders. But if you see a hummingbird sitting up somewhere and you see it fly out and then come back and sit down and fly out, they're going up and catching, catching bugs. Okay, this is going to be an adult female ruby joint hummingbird, but I got to prove that. Around on the inside, that's called a gape that uh, young birds have. Now, this is a, a young one that was hatched this summer. See this hummingbird drinking? It, why do you feed hummingbirds? First thing, it's only polite to give them a snack. The next thing it does is calm you down. You have to be careful doing this with a bird in the hand because a bird can drink so much you can't fly. I've had a bird drink a third of its body weight sitting in my hand. You know? Now, if you want to, come up and stand around here. 5.6 millimeter And for different kind of birds. I've got all sorts of different bands. But with ruby throats, this is the only size, so those are the only ones I take out. Now I said the band's got a letter and five number of them. All right, now I'm going to take that band and run it up this needle, and that opens the band wide enough to go around the bird's leg. It's only going to close it to a circle, so it's going to be loose on the bird's leg like it's wearing an anklet, so it'll roll around and up and down. If you look at the lower part of this thing here, you're going to see a lighter color that looks like chicken fat. Can you show that around a little bit? across there? Sure. That's fat. They, they start putting on fat on their lower belly there, on their back. It'll actually be humpback. If they get so so fat, but you know they're putting on that fat for uh, what they desperately need for migrating. But, uh, you know, tell people hummingbirds are much smarter than us because they can put on fat very quickly. But when this bird gets to where it's going, it doesn't. It's not fat anymore, so they can lose it very fast. She's getting ready to go. She is not heavy enough to go across the gulf yet. But mm. She doesn't have to be. Can you turn this a bit? All right, I don't know if we can get to everybody, but if you've never felt a hummingbird's heartbeat, hold your finger out. I'm going to touch it to the tip of your finger. 
When they're hovering in front of a flower, their heart rate is as high as 1,200 beats a minute. So I tell people, don't think heartbeat, think sewing machine. <laughs> uh, that's what it feels like. And I tell people, you know, it's not because the hummingbird is glad to see me or scared or anything like that. This is just normal heart rate. Once you turn it loose, is there a chance it will go back and be caught again? Uh, yeah. It, when, when we're doing a normal banding day, we will have a few birds that we call trap jumpers. <laughs> I mean, they break the code that there's food in there and they're not going to get hurt. And so they will uh, go back in there. <laughs> <laughs> He'll sit in your hand till I make it go. But it has nothing to do with that. It's because the bird doesn't know it's loose. But when they're jerking like that, they're going to figure it out instantly and fly away. Say bye. The research project that you plan to publish in a juried journal. There now. I'm just doing the final formatting on my paper on 20 years of winter hummingbird banding here in the southeast. That'll be this, my seventh paper. Mm -hmm. So I'm down to the point now that they, they leave me alone. But people want to ban hummingbirds. I go, well, what are you going to do with that? Oh, I'm just going to ban birds in my yard. No, you're not going to get a, you're not going to get a license to do that. So, you know, people people want to play with birds, which it's fun playing with birds, mm -hmm. but you got to be doing real research too. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Well, the best way to say thank you is call me this winter with a winter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>